is the Camp Baker Show. Seeking answers to age-old questions. Deciphering the world painted around you by the mainstream media. This is the Kev Baker Show. And now, here is your host, Kev Baker. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back, Wookiees. You're tuned in live to tonight's Kev Baker Show. I am one of your hosts, Kev Baker, and tonight I am joined by Mr. Johnny Whistles. And this being Tuesday night, it is our first nano night of 2016. And what an absolutely mind-blowing show we have got lined up for you tonight. This is like food and drink for all of us conspiracy nuts out there. Because tonight we're going to be getting into it with the Economist cover for the world in 2016. We're going to be trying to decode the latest mind woo coming from the Rothschilds. That's right, folks, the Economist, half owned by the Rothschilds. So when these guys put something out, we really do have to sit and take note. But before we get anywhere, let me go over to my two co-hosts this evening. First up, Johnny Whistles. Can we hear you? Houston, Houston, come in, Houston. Houston here, loud and clear. Absolutely fine. Fantastic, Johnny. You know, NASA, they'll probably put some static over that and use it in some kind of fake moon landing. Yeah, probably, Kev. No, it's great to be back here, Kev. And after a wee tip from you, everything seems to be going swimmingly well. So, But I'll tell you what, i just seen uh, Joe's wife, Angela, post on Facebook there, Kev, <laughs> when you get a, a friend request from someone as important as... Don't, don't, I don't, I'm absolutely envious. Joe told me earlier today, don't, don't give him a bigger head. Wow, Kev. Go on then, tell the audience, tell the audience who requested Joe on Facebook, Johnny. Dr. Michio Kaku. Oh, yes. The very man. Now, that's fantastic, Kev. That really is awesome. I think that's a testament to the level that not just the show and... Joe's and Freaky Friday's getting to, but Truth Frequency Radio. And of course, Joe being Joe, he is not letting this opportunity go to waste. And the invitation to join us for a Freaky Friday has been sent out. So just cross wow. your fingers, everyone. Please, please, please. So anyway, there would be no Nano Night without our sister, Sharon, over in California for the first time this year. A huge Kev Baker show. Wookie, welcome. Hey, happy new year. Here we are. We are off. Well, at, to quote our beloved president, I'm raring to go. I did not have a $70 million holiday, but I'm still doing great. Oh, Obama and his crocodile tears. No doubt we'll mention him at some point as the show goes on. But like Nano, there can be no show. Yes. Nano. Let's get yes. real now, because this is the okay. kind of stuff that we buy the tinfoil for. The Economist it cover is becoming like a Comet Elenin, a kind of Planet Nibiru event. We're all looking out for these Economist covers. Tell us about the latest one. Oh, my God. I found this at the store on Thursday. The first thing I did is I grabbed it. And I and I'm the by the way, people, when you you've got to buy it, it's fourteen dollars. Well, by it's the way, every dollar. I almost <laughs> forgot because tonight I've done something different for the show. And because okay. we're going to be discussing images, I've actually created a page over at the website. I'm going to post that in the chat room. And it's www.kevbakershow.com forward slash home forward slash supporting notes. Now, this will have the images that we are talking about in there. I've numbered them. Yes. I'll also drop them in the chat, Nano, because I'm a good guy like that. Take it away. Okay. You're fantastic. Well, the thing that made me actually buy it within two seconds of picking it up is when you take a look at the cover. Now, there's there's actually the cover on the front, and then when, and there's also the other half of the cover on page 15, which I know you're sending over for everybody in chat to see. But the only person who's running for office 
is Hillary Clinton, and she's the only one that's on the cover at all, which I thought was very interesting. No Donald Trump and nobody else. Because as, as far as I'm concerned, the only two people really running for office right now are her and Trump. I mean, they've, they're, they're, they're sucking up most of the news cycles, whether you're alternative or, or you're, you know, MSNBC or whatever you are. Um, very interesting. Merkel is in the center, whereas Obama was last year. Obama is in, and it's very interesting too, the people they put in black and white. And I looked at this cover for a really long, long time. Mm-hmm. And the person who has the really best picture of themselves is Putin and he's in color. Did you find that pretty interesting, Kev? Definitely. And if the listeners have got that front cover up, now Nano's bang on. You will see some characters in color and the majority of them in black and white. We've got Merkel at the front, like you mentioned, Nano. And she really is going to be prominent this year. We've got this whole migration crisis still unfolding. We've got Britain in or out the EU. And with Germany being so influenced and behind the euro if people look up in the back left-hand corner below the sun, we have got some kind of gold coin being parachuted by what looks like a euro or a, or a dollar. And anything those are a, both those are both euros. By well, the way. there we go. Yeah, this is going to be something that's very very prominent this year. But what I took yeah. out of it is we've got President Z of China. Yes. We have got Putin. We have got Christine Lagarde of the IMF. Yes. We have got Le Pen from the French right. Mm -hmm. We have got the Pope and we have the young girl who is nominated. Malala. That's the one, yes. She was shot by the Taliban. Now, these people for me, Nano, we've got Z and Putin. That signifies... You've also got Sturgeon, your Nicola. Yeah, but she's in black and white. Bear with me here. Oh, okay. The colour ones for me are to signify where the real power amongst these front people are going to be. And then you can go to Lagarde. She's in color. IMF. They're always going to feature prominently. The right. Now who's who's the guy? Yeah, by the Pope. The guy by the Pope. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I tried to dig him out today, and I couldn't. He's just behind the robot on the right hand side for the listeners. Yes. Yes. Now, if you're a cartoon like Assad and you're in color, do you count? <laughs> He's way in the back. You see, this is very strange because that too could even be something out of a Monty Python, couldn't it, John? Yep, definitely. It's very strange. That is nuts. Now, one thing that I did get from it as well, Nano, there's a sundial up in the right-hand corner. Now, it's a sun, and if you count the rays on it, there actually is 12 of them. Now, if you come to the one, two, three mark, the third ray round, you'll see a butterfly there. Now, right. butterfly, obviously, it can refer to the mind control, but we're thinking the economist here, money. What is a butterfly? And I'm thinking this is a some kind of metamorphosis, some transformation in the actual monetary system. When I saw that, the first thing without listening to anybody else's uh, input on this is I thought of the climate summit and uh, climate change because of the butterfly and because of the time and the sun. It's interesting that it's like time for a change. Uh, When you read The Economist, it's about uh, when we have to do the time changes twice a year, and uh, which I hate, but those are worldwide. So supposedly they save energy. So it's all kind of connected to energy, I guess. But and you that get was that my first from thing. Obama's green tie as well. Yes. And I want to ask you about the crazy colored American flag that is prominent on the front. Well, what I thought was interesting about it was two things. Number one, when you look where the start, well, first of all, it's horrifying to see. I'm sorry, I love our flag, so yuck. But um, when you see the green and you see Obama's green tie, what I thought, there that's a match, okay? And to me, it's all about his green initiative. He's big on climate change. I think that, I think he feels like, from what I understand, President Obama feels that Obamacare and the green initiative and probably taking the guns will be his big claim to fame. Now, all the different colors, of course, are going to be the immigration issues and all of the people 
that we're taking in right now, all the different nations uh, that are coming into our country, all this, all this stuff that's going on. So I think that's basically when I look at the flag, that was the first thing that popped out at me was those two items. Let me go to Johnny Whistles because sure. you were blown away when I showed you this today, John, and we're still dealing with image number one so far. But Nano mentioned her, Nazi Sturgeon. I mean, Nicola Sturgeon up on the top left-hand <laughs> side, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Kev, if you notice that some people are all in colour and some people are uh, all in grey and some people are half and half. Yeah. Like Nicola Sturgeon is half and half. And yeah. so is her arch Mr. enemy Z. on the exact opposite side of the picture. David Hamface. Mm. Oh, the walking, talking sausage guy? Yes, David yes. Hammerin. Now, what's interesting is when you look at Obama, the is it the president of China? The president of China is in full color. Obama's but half and half. And then Japan is on the other side of Obama. And he's in half and half color as well. So I think there's going to be something going on between... America, China, and Japan this year, and which is also what the economy said. We don't have to look far for that, Nano, because no. the South China Sea, we've got right. China building those islands, and we can yes. see a flashpoint potentially there. And I think that's exactly what they are representing in that image. What about the guy on the bike, guys? Guy in the bottom left-hand corner. Do you think mm. maybe to do with the technology that's going to be coming this year? It is. In fact, it's what, okay, according to the magazine, that signifies all the different language from all of the, like, in other words, you know, like LOL or L, you know, left mm -hmm. line. Well, I have to, I can type it. I can't say it all. Tech speak. <laughs> it's tech speak. And so that's basically what that represents. And then the kid, this, this you see the kid on the right with the glasses? Yeah. That represents um, virtual reality. And then the little unicorn on top was the thing I was telling you guys before the show represents the unicorn represents the companies in America that are a billion plus. And they also predicted an earthquake. And everybody knows, I always shared this with Kevin and uh, Johnny Whistles, everyone knows how I hate that. But it's predicted on page 28 that there may be a huge earthquake here in San Francisco in the Silicon Valley. And I'll just read this last sentence. The timing of natural disasters and their impact are never predictable, but just as unicorns can turn out to be real, so can the big surprises known as black swans. Ah, <laughs> the black swan. <laughs> we were talking about that before the show, but you're talking about earth changes there. And I want to throw in a bit of deep woo before we go to the break, Nano. I don't know what this means. However, The Economist, they run a video to support their article. And within the first couple of minutes of it, I found something rather disturbing and startling. And it's almost sneaked in there as some kind of subliminal message. Now, I'm just getting ready to post this into the chat. And if you're on the website, scroll down to image number five. The World in 2016 by The Economist on YouTube and look what it shows. That for me is a second sun in the sky, Nano. They throw it in there. It's a kind of throwaway one. A couple of seconds move on. Why, Nano? Why? You know, I don't know. And I didn't, it, this isn't on any any place in the magazine and I don't, I really don't know what that means. Um, they have, I, I will tell you, having gone cover to cover a number of times, they do talk a lot about high tech. So I don't know if that means space or exploration or something else. Okay, get a load of this, guys. We've just got enough time before the break. This is the start of the video in question. Have you ever wondered what the future holds? In 2016, what will be the moments that bring the world together and the ones that tear it apart? 
take a look at the people, the places, and the plans. We want to create an artificial coastline. These are some of the stories that will shape the year ahead. Where I've paused it there is where you've seen the two sons. Some of the stories that will shape the year ahead. And it says there are some of the people. It shows you Hillary Clinton. Some of the places. It shows you Times Square in New York. And then it says something about building artificial shorelines. Nano. You know what comes to mind is the the D-Wave president... And Mr. CEO, Jordy Rose. Oh, there's a cat. We can't when, include him in this, can we? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. When you think about it, when he said we're going to reach into the reality and pull out what we need. Oh, guys, this is only starting to get woo. Wiki here will talk to you on the other side. Stay tuned. This is amazing. We'll be back up in short message to stay people anyway. Stand tall in the face of tyranny. I want it all, all my freedom and liberty. I'll keep my guns, you can keep your security. I'll stand tall in the face of tyranny. I'll stand tall in the face of tyranny. I want it all, all my freedom and liberty. I'll keep my guns, you can keep your security. I'll stand tall in the face of tyranny. Welcome back to all you Wookiees that are tuned in live tonight to the Kev Baker Show. This, the 5th of January 2016. I'm Kev Baker. I'm joined by Johnny Whistles and the one and only Nano Girl. And what a laugh we were just having during the break. And you know, I wish we could just keep it rolling during the break sometimes. But we're now going to be moving on to image number two. Now, this is the full artist's rendition. And the artist is called Matt heading now there's one version for the front cover which is squashed down and this is the full image and nano we were having a bit of a hoot there during the break because we were trying to figure out whether this was an old cover a new cover or what's going on i know that's i I know i'm when i was prepping for the show last night so in other words uh the economist has been doing these covers for 30 years and for some reason i thought this was 30 years old but Part of it is you've got Elizabeth Taylor in there, right? And Bill Clinton hasn't looked that good in a long time. But what saved us, of course, is Elon Musk is in there. And he wasn't there 30 years ago. All Although right, with so. the technology he's got, who knows, Nano, he could be re-engineered. <laughs> he could be a walking, talking android. Uh, so now, interesting. Okay, so let's look at who's in color on on this side of the show, you've got Blair. Isn't Blair done being running around your Ooh, neck of the Tony woods? Tony Blair was in the news just recently, and that's because as one of his think tanks, they've identified the next ISIS. I believe it's something like 65,000 potential Islamists ready to fill the void that Russia have left now that they've decimated the ranks. So with his kind of involvement in the banking higher levels as well he's just given up his job as the middle east war envoy i believe he will still be a player and this is what i was suggesting to you earlier and i suggest to the listeners and it's just my opinion but if we take this full image now the two sides of it take hillary for example on the left the fact that she's the only candidate there kind of gives me a wink or a hint that she may win it however her man bill clinton on the right front and centre, colour. And here's the kind of irony, Nano, because when Bill was in power, people say Hillary ran the office. This time round, it might be role reversal. Well, this is something I don't agree with them. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, I guess uh, Mr. Trump was out there and he was in a, a stadium that was like a football game. And I don't think she is the candidate to beat. And we also know that elections aren't real anyway. Now, what this does say is, is she is the choice of the Rothschilds. Uh, and I think that, that kind of confirms where she's coming from. Um, I actually think he has a possibility of sinking her. 
There's a lot of sca- scandals coming out around Bill Clinton, and look what's happening to Bill Cosby, which does anybody think that that's kind of an interesting coinky dink that the Cosby thing's happening right now? I well, don't think it is. I think the fact that it is happening to Cosby, and it should happen to anyone where there's right. these allegations. It should happen yeah. to Clinton as well. Right. Everyone should be on an equal level playing field, especially when it comes to accusations, and it's beyond accusations with Bill Nano. They've paid people off in the past, and it's disgusting. He should be in a jail. Oh, I absolutely agree. But moving on from that, let's talk a little bit about the baby in the world and what I think and what you think. Now, what I think, and the first thing I saw, uh, and I'd heard other people say, that the way that the Rothschilds or the powers that be look at us is we're little children. We need to be... Uh, taken care of and told what to do. What I think is that, again, with that movie coming out on Sci-Fi Channel, Childhood's End, to me, what this signifies, it is the end of our childhood, and we are coming into, I'd say, past adolescence, definitely adulthood, where we're going to start to take the power back and our own power back. So that's what I saw out of this. What did you guys see? Very interesting, especially after we've spoken about childhood's end recently. And yeah, Nano, I do get something very similar to you. It's almost like the birthing of the world or the handing over of the world to the new child. And if you come right up, that image that we're discussing is the very small one at the centre, along the bottom, in number two, or the full image. But go up from that. Because at the top of the image, we have, like I said before, a Chinese temple. Now, you can't see it there. It might be Japanese. It's definitely Eastern. But there's some kind of warrior stood on it, Nano. And I don't know, possibly it could signify this new age, this kind of golden age that was mentioned before in the show and everything. It could well have a Chinese flavor at the head of it. And there's one other image I want to share with you and the listeners And I found this on The Economist's Facebook page, and this definitely fits. Because I'll share this, I'll just drop this in the chat for you guys as well to look at. It's image number four. This is a cartoon picture which came from just last month that was posted. And it says, and it looks like a very old guy, he's got sands of time hanging off him, and he's holding the world that's on fire. And he says, try to look on the bright side. And he's sitting on the side of a signpost saying 2015. And on the 2016 side, the small child is there again with all the time in the world because the time glass now is reset. And it says on that side of the image, maybe the rising oceans will take care of the hot spots. Again, Nano and, and Johnny and listeners, I think, in reference to global warming, climate change, whatever label they put on it for the next year. Um, going back to what's on top of the like pagoda, is if you, I can see it in my magazine, that looks like Christopher Columbus. That looks like somebody from that time zone. That's the kind of, like, or even, and now, I don't know if you know this, but it's Shakespeare's 400th anniversary. When you go to the page 36 and 37, you'll see that there's a 400th anniversary of Shakespeare. So that could be Shakespeare up there. That's what I'm wondering if what, if that's who is that is. Is the main is. picture again? Because I see yes, in the chat room, you, I think there was a few shouts for Karl Marx. I'm not sure who it is. Oh, it looks like no, Albert that, Pike like as if well. You, yeah, that looks like Karl Marx. But if you look at, you can't see it from the picture you've put in the chat. Right. But the in the, on the magazine, yes, yes. on the top in the magazine, I think it's I think it's Shakespeare. Um, I have a question. Okay, let's go back to the right side picture. I could not figure out who that girl is, the woman with the kind of... Oh, and by the way, the theme of this whole thing is women, woe, and wins for 2016. That's the big theme. Women, woe, and wins. Three Ws. Okay. Now, who is the lady with the cell phone? Is, is that, that anybody Taylor you know? Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. I'm just asking. It could be her. It could be, yeah. It, it could be like her. her. And Johnny, you were talking about the character in between her and David Cameron. Yes. Well, just the fact that the guy is actually using David Cameron's shoulder, do you know what I mean, to position his gun. Something that <laughs> the UK have been doing anyway is giving ISIS a hand throughout their campaign. Absolutely. And guys, right. something else I would 
point to as well is in front of Bill Clinton Nano and Elon Musk, we have the Baphomet banker. Yes. Now, I was talking about a transformation in the monetary system. Possibly, these guys could be the scapegoats, if you pardon the pun, with this guy looking like a hoofed kind of horned goat. I think you're right. And one of the other uh, big conversation um, in the magazine is about Bitcoin and where the they're, they're predicting a very tough year economically. And there'll be an, a lot of upheavals in businesses and uh, it'll be around the world. And very interestingly, I got the magazine on Thursday and they had predicted China was going to have a very tough year uh, financially. And what did they do on Monday? Kaboom. That was yesterday. I'm and, like, you know, oh my God. another place that I think, or I hope it's not going to be a tough year, but I suspect the flag in the top right-hand corner is Albania. Yeah. Now, it obviously means something. And I'll be perfectly honest, Albania has been as far off my radar as Timbuktu. I don't know the political situation. I know nothing about that, Nano. I don't. I, I, you know, I concentrated so much more on the left side. Um, you've got Justin Trudeau, who just got elected in Canada. The Philippines are going to have a bit of a tough year as well. They've got some stuff coming up. Like I said, if you go to page uh, 36 and 37, where you've got the stadium, you have a lot of events happening. And oh, but let's get into this. Let's get into this one. Okay. Now, if you look at the upper top, we have a new Star Wars movie, or excuse me, a new Star Trek movie coming out, I think in July. And then on the right, there's a new Independence Day movie coming out as well. And that's what those two signify. We sent up a uh, rocket to go past Jupiter in 2011, and it'll be going past it this year. So and we've uh, also got some kind of eclipse event, maybe. On the yes, top we do. Right, and yes, on the top do. left is that the moon? Uh, no, that's Jupiter. That's Jupiter, right? Cool. That's Jupiter. That's where we're going to be. Our our ship is going to. And when I was looking, reading about that, I thought, yeah, and you guys won't talk about it or tell us about it either. So the sequel from Independence Day is June. In July, the Star Trek movie comes out. Um, Star Trek Beyond is the name of it. July, NASA's Juno, launched in 2011, reaches Jupiter. So what it's going to do, I mean, I was just kind of, if you look at the left side of this, it kind of gives you the highlights. But you have five major elections, one of them in the UK, obviously the USA. It, aren't you guys going to maybe do another referendum for freedom? Oh, I think don't encourage don't, that don't, okay, Nazi right. sturgeon. But yeah, it's okay. a chance. But I mean, there's, there's even talk of having a Scotland-England debate. That's always going on in the background now. But it's these, this is really key, this part of the picture, I feel, Nano. Because if you look at these five podiums, then you have the UK, you've got the Union Jack on the left-hand side. Yes. And it's got an arrow in it. Yes. And it's also got London wrote on it. Now, if you compare that to the other four, there's no Washington written in the middle of the American flag. So no, have we right. got a target painted on London right now? I know. That was very interesting that that's the only one with an arrow and the only one with the, and then like you said, London. Uh, we're going to have a nuclear summit here in in Washington, <laughs> D.C., put uh-huh. together, put uh, hosted by President Obama. Well, you mentioned nuclear summits, and of course, yes. if you look around the picture, there's a lot of tridents that are actually stuck in the ground. They're mixed in amongst the actual arrows, and the trident, of course, well, we were all looking at the trident when we were looking at the MH370 and MH17. That was on the logo of the plane. Now, it's also Poseidon staff, the trident. Very, very occult symbology there. And, of course, it just happens to be the name of our nuclear fleet and yours, Nano. Yes. <laughs> uh, did you guys notice all the monkeys? This is the year of the monkey. 2016 yeah. is the year of the monkey, which is why there's all the monkeys. We're going to have the Olympics. And that's going to be in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. 
And there's a lot of, of course, with every Olympic, there's always a lot of controversy because from what I understand, they're kind of getting rid of the poor and the, you know, the people who are living on the streets, the kids. So there's a lot of controversy and they're going through a lot of financial upheaval. We are going to have an eclipse. Um, let's see what else. I just did a bunch what of... What the tanks rolling through? <laughs> the- well, I, I mean... the exit sign scored out? I don't know about that one. Uh, National I thought it was, parks above it? Are we maybe yeah. looking at some kind of more land issues, some kind of flashpoint? I, um, I think actually there's an anniversary. There's a lot of anniversaries. And let's see, August, America's U.S. parks turn 100. That's what that means. The Olympics will be in Rio de Janeiro in August. Uh, Russia votes for their parliaments in September, so they're going to be one of the elections. Uh, the Great Fire of London ravaged the city 350 years ago, and that's what the fire is. And maybe ah. that's, why London, that's why London is written on that box. Nice, fine, Nano. And you know, there might be people out there thinking, what are you talking about? These are just a <laughs> series of images in a magazine. But this magazine is critical. It's not very often you get the Rothschilds putting stuff out there, and this is putting it out there. And Nana, we spoke about last year's Economist cover, and you know, another Economist cover that we really need to look at is 1988, I believe it is. And yeah. do you know what it had then, Nano? It had a phoenix rising from the flames, and the flames was fiat currency. And it said on a gold medallion, on a gold coin, around the phoenix's neck, 20 18, the rise of the global currency. And you know, with the way things are shaping up right now, Nano, who can argue with that? I don't think you can. And that's what they're talking about. That would put Um, us two years out. And if you look at the main image, the double spread, the big long image, you've got Greenspan sitting there. 2006, well, that would be A, when he kind of stepped down. But it was also two years before the big crash as well. Well, when you look at all of those... Exactly. If, we, if you look at all those numbers on that picture, all those years, those are the years before the big recessions. And that's what that I've heard somebody else talk about that. You've got 1987, 1993, 2000, and 2006, right before 2008 where we had – and then they're predicting something. Very interesting, the very tired soldiers in front of Bill Clinton. I had a look at that and, you know, it was almost – I thought I recognized it, and it wasn't. But it's very, very similar to the cover of Band of Brothers. It looks like Militia, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like oh, Militia? Oh, nano. That's what it looks like. What do we like. make of the dude in the UFO? Why has he got, like, um, Chinese? Well, with- no, do you want it? According to, again, now, most of the stuff is according to The Economist. So I'm just giving you their point of view. It's called Fly Me to the Future. So, again, a lot of the stuff in here, which you guys will find very interesting because I know everybody loves the tech, is a lot of predictions on tech. And so that whole look is business, technology, where we're headed, and it's called Fly Me to the Future. See, and see the little bottle of stuff on the right? That's brains. There's an article in here on how we're growing our body parts, brains, kidneys, all kinds of stuff. Uh, The bowl to the left. Now, there's another picture in here that you'll see where there's a hamburger. And it's not on any of the pictures you put out. But there's a picture of a hamburger and then a bowl. This is for China. And the hamburger represents us. And China is, according to the magazine, sick to death of America dictating to them. Oh, this is key because the video I played before, the first thing they cut to, which is very rare in itself, was actually footage of the very secretive Chinese athletics training kind of academy. This place never allows the cameras in. And they were talking very much along the lines of they're determined in 2016, at the Olympics, of course, to knock America off the top of the tree because they've always been physically superior, blah, blah, blah. However, when you look at the big picture, Nano, it's almost like a metaphor what's going on in the real geopolitical world. America have been the physical might for so long now, and here we have this secretive, highly powerful 
rise in power. Well, maybe that's exactly what all this means because if you look at the stars and stripes, that's kind of us. If we go back to the stadium and and all the tanks and all that stuff, maybe that would represent that, you know, we're done. Because you've got you've got the G7 meeting, you've got uh and then if you notice the Democrats and the Republicans are really angry and all the referees this is going to be a very vicious campaign. And guys, I'm not sure if we discussed it on air, but did we talk about the AIDS sign on the right-hand side of the picture? Mm, we have not talked about the AIDS sign yet. Well, I, don't, I know, Johnny, you've looked into a bit of this. I know, Nano, you share the same page. But I'll come to you first, Johnny, then Nano. Your thoughts on the AIDS written in the sky above... Oh, was that, who was that again? Nano Elizabeth Taylor? Uh, that's Elizabeth Taylor. Yes. Yeah, and it, it looks like the balloon as well that's above it. Is that like all the world flags? Yeah, it looks like you know a, I mean, it could be G20, G something. Yeah, it who could knows. be, I mean, dropping right into the AIDS sign, which really you can possibly see that AIDS is going to be high on the agenda, Kevin. That's when they're going to push their vaccine or their drug. And Johnny Whistles has disappeared. But yeah, AIDS is going to be a big story this year, I feel. And Nano, I think, Johnny, if we do get him back, what he was yeah. going to go... There he is, Johnny, you're back, man. Yeah, I don't know. Just cut out there, mate. Uh, but yeah, they're going to push it, Kev, because of the drug Travada. And that's going to be quite high on the agenda. So you can see AIDS being pushed as a, a global threat and somebody making an absolute fortune from this drug. Absolutely. Absolutely. And can I throw in one more thing before we run out of time? Oh. This kind of, but Johnny Whistles, if you have anything more you wanted to say about AIDS, I wanted to say one more thing about robots because we know how much Kev loves them. <laughs> yeah, no, on you go and I know you're fine, pal. Okay, all right. So uh, Faith Popcorn is one of my favorite uh, futurists. I love her. And she's been right so many times. So when you look at the picture on the left, you see the robot – and then you see on the other side that, that guy that's kind of a cartoon. Well, on page 112 in the magazine, it's called The Humanoid Condition. And this is what she says. Now, here's a prediction that no one seems to want to believe. The robots are coming, and we will be merging, mating, and morphing with them. Think about it. We're already becoming mechanized, knee and hip replacements, no big deal. A Google contact lens that measures your blood sugar, all good. The Swedish fingertip chip that lets employees unlock the office and fire up the copier, blah, 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 blah. Well, as we all know, right? Which I thought, I just thought it was interesting the way that she cached that in the magazine. Controversial question. And let me wear my kind of Elon, Mu- well, my Ray Kurzweil kind of dark hat here for a moment. Guys. Okay. Okay. Evolution. Now, obviously, computers are something and machines are something that we came up with ourselves as we evolve and Mm -hmm. we progressed. Is it the natural next step? And remember, I'm just asking this for a talking point. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm recommending people get this magazine. That is kind of the overtone of this that... It talks a lot of, obviously, it's a financial magazine, so it's all about finance, but it is about technology and where we're headed. And then you were talking about the two sons and then that that, that cartoon about uh, just, it's, it's just all of it starts to kind of look like that may be where we're headed. That may be a part of, of how we end up. And like I said, Faith Popcorn has been pretty brilliant on nailing it and you know, that may be where we're headed. You said yourself that we're just avatars anyway for our soul. So do we end up in a human body or do we end up in an android? And I would love to go back maybe two, three hundred years, take your pick before all this technology and spend some time with our fellow humans from that time period. I think we'd be quite shocked. I think to be human then is different from being human now. Just think of our connectivity to technology and everything else, the fast-paced life that we live in, one thing after another after another, and compare that to the relative peace and quiet, maybe before all of these connections. 
just a thought, guys. I, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be controversial. It's just something I've always thought about. Yeah, but, you know, they didn't live very long. And have you ever noticed the pictures from those time zones? They looked old before their ages. They had a very hard life. You had to do a lot of physical stuff. I mean, when I look at pictures from even the even the 40s or the 30s or 20s, I mean, with some exceptions, obviously, there's a lot of people that look so much older. Like, you look at John Wayne and Robert Mitchum and all those stars – they, their continents of who they were as humans is completely different as to who we are now. So you're absolutely right. And I mean, we're, Johnny Whistles, this is just stuff for people to think about because, I mean, we've got some of the largest think tanks which shape the world we live, the UN. They're going to be debating things like these kind of human 2.0 as we go forward. But have you ever thought what it was like way back then, John? Well, see, that's why I've got to disagree with Nano there, because when I was born in 1812... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so much younger. Yeah, I mean, things were different then. We had time to think. <laughs> People don't have that time anymore, because there's too many things going on in life that is bombarded with information. It's like an information overload. And we don't have the time to think like they did back in maybe 300 years ago. Oh, all great talking points, Nano, and this has been so much <laughs> fun. It really has. And like we said at the top of the show, I mean, for conspiracy theorists and people into the X-Files and all the stuff we look at, to take time out for one night, I think it's okay to look at this kind of thing. Because, Nano, we were saying before the show, we're going to keep this kind of on the back burner and we're going to come back and we're going to point out events as they unfold, aren't we? Well, we already had the event on Monday happen. So maybe I should start to keep a list because that was exactly what they predicted. Well, I've got a horrible, horrible prediction, premonition. Call it what you may. Obama Nokio, he has his pen, he has his phone. He's surrounded by the Sandy Hook victim's parents. <clears throat> Cough. Beware a false flag. Some kind of shooting, possibly the Hammond Ranch, something just for him to have the images to roll alongside his crocodile tears as he takes that constitution that he says he holds so dear to his heart and rips it up. And I honestly I, do fear that, Nano. Can I borrow a line from my favorite line from The Gladiator? You must. I think the time for honoring himself will soon be an end. Ah. And talking of coming to an end, that's tonight's Ken Baker show wrapped up. So Joseph just headed into the chat. We've got Ken Webb in there. We'll probably have all of them after the break on Down the Rabbit Hole with your very favourite man himself, Popeye. So don't go anywhere, folks. Wherever you are, make a TFR. Denny Touch.